All right, God bless you. This is Pastor Washington, Pastor Regeneration Temple. And it is Wednesday where we get a chance to go through the word of God. And I am so excited uh, this week uh, because it's another day that the Lord has made and I will be glad and rejoice in it. Uh, we're going to see what the Bible has to say uh, in reference to addictions and drugs. Uh, I, I want to, because I, I received several requests, I actually went out last week and pray with a person at home where they felt like they, you know, were being attacked and spiritually being attacked and feel like they were uh, going to reuse or go back and relapse and start using drugs all over again. And so last week that was kind of on my mind and on my heart and I want to kind of deal with that today. And maybe it's not you, maybe it's somebody that you know, uh, like me, drugs impacted my life uh, significantly from a early age, you know, in the early 80s when crack cocaine and all of that had hit the streets and how it affected so many homes, uh, let alone African-American homes, but so many homes in general that it divided the family. Many of us uh, were, were affected, you know, by our family member, our loved ones who just lost control. And I want to talk about that today because it, you know, even looking in the United States, if you've been looking at the news, you know that drug fentanyl, uh, uh, the overdose rate has just increased. And I didn't know this, but from ages to 18 and 45, it is the number one cause of death from ages 18 to 45. It, it surpassed uh, the coronavirus in 2020. In 2020, it wasn't the coronavirus, but it, according to U.S. government data, the overdose, fentanyl overdoses, um, they actually had a more significant impact on the on the death rate in the United States. Very interesting. And so if you look at the news now, they're catching people from Mexico and everywhere that are uh, uh, importing this drug. And this import of drugs has called it, caused this uh, detrimental substance abuse um, in the United States. And so I, I want to talk about that because if it's not fentanyl, if it's something else, and what, what happens is what I've seen is that people are lacing other drugs like weed, marijuana with fentanyl. They're putting it in a drug and causing people to use it, not knowingly. And some of those people overdose on it and die. So let's talk about this because if you're not using it at all, then you have more of a chance of not ever having that type of experience. So the scripture I want to read today is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Uh, verse six, and it says, uh, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for an helmet, the hope of salvation. All right, so I want to begin this by Paul was writing this letter to the church at Thessalonica uh, because they were Christians, but they were having some afflictions. They were going through some difficult experiences and challenges in their faith. And so when Paul writes this, one of the reasons that he writes it, writes this letter, along with other things, is that he wanted them to understand the benefit and the blessing of sanctification. Uh, because he tells them to live holy. You'll see that throughout the text. And he also tells them to be sanctified. Now, the definition of sanctification in its generic form, it means to sanctify someone or something that is set apart. It is set apart or set a person apart, a thing apart for the use that is intended by the designer. Okay. So it is, it is to set someone apart, to set them, uh, set a thing apart for the intended use by the designer. Prime example, if I have a pen, when I use the pen, um, the pen is then being sanctified. It's a sanctified pen because it's being used for what it's intended to, just like uh, glasses, when they increase your sight, they're being used for what it was intended to be used for. So that's sanctified. That's it's being sanctified. So when we're not walking in sanctification, which in the Greek sanctification means to be made holy, 
if we're not walking in sanctification because we were intended, Ephesians chapter one, we were intended to live holy. We were created to live holy. If we're not walking in sanctification, then we are being misused. And one of the biggest ways to misuse our body, our temper, our vessel is to use drugs, is to use a substance, is to be caught up in lust. It's uncontrollable. To be caught up in uh, sexual gratification under, is uncontrollable. So he says, sanctification, Paul is saying, sanctification is the way that you avoid the, the way that you avoid misusing this temple because you were caused to use it for the glory of God. All right, so now let's go a little bit further. If your family member, somebody that you know, wants to be free from this addiction, number one, they have to make a choice. Their heart and their mind must be persuaded that they want to come out. The Bible says that we must sit down and count up the cost. You got to decide that this is something that you want to do. You can never do this for your family member. Your family member has to decide themselves that they want to be free from this addiction. They got to decide because you can open up the jail cell, but if they don't want to step out, they they will they will keep themselves in the bondage that they are in because they are not ready to leave where they are. All right, number 2, sanctification must be the aim. That, you know, not halfway, not a little bit, but I want to be totally, completely sanctified. I want my vessel, I want my mind, I want my heart, I want my soul to be used for what it was intended to be used for. The designer, the creator created me and he had a purpose in mind. And the only way I can do that is I have to be sober. I cannot be drunk off of uh uh, uh, different substances. I cannot be addicted to different substances and be used uh, like God wants me to be used. Okay. So now let's, let's look at this. When he says in first Thessalonians, he says, therefore, let us not sleep. Now this word sleep to me, it speaks of ignorance. Let us not be ignorant. Number two, it speaks of insensibility. I, I'm not sensitive to anything. I'm just I just want to please myself. I'm not sensitive to what God wants. I want to please myself. I'm not sensitive to what others want. I just want to please myself. And then sleep also speaks of no defense. I'm sleep. I have no defense. You know, when you go to sleep at night, you have no defense. Somebody could come and give you a, a MMA elbow to your face and you will have no defense. But for the grace of God that covers us and watches over us while we sleep. Number four, sleep speaks of inactivity. I may ask my Bible study students tonight to repeat these. Uh, so just be on alert. But sleep speaks to number four of inactivity. So number one, ignorance. Number two, insensibility. Number three, no defense. And number four, inactivity. I'm sleep. I'm um, the Bible says that we we were living according to the course of this world. We were living according to the course of Satan, the king, the prince and the king, the prince of this world. OK, so the Bible wants us to be sober because being intoxicated makes us more likely to sin. It makes us more likely to fall into sin all over again. So if we look at this text, he's commanding us to not be asleep, to be awake, to be sober. Uh, and then he says, for those who sleep, sleep at what? Sleep at night. Those who sleep, sleep at night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the what? They're drunken in the night. Do you know, not know that decades of research prove that alcohol and drugs lower self-control? Now, I didn't need to tell you that, but the CDC, it, it says that it lowers self-control. And most of you know, if you ever did anything, you ever drunk anything or got high on something, it lowers your self-control. And all of a sudden, you're more likely to do something else more dangerous because now you have no self-control. I love the scripture, Proverbs 25 and 28, for it says, he that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city that's broken down without walls. So it says you have no cover, you have no protection because you have no self-control. And so uh, as a, a person who wants to get out of that life, you really want to get out of that life. 
You have to make up your mind to say, I want to live sanctified. I want to live a sober life. Sober life means I am alert. I am aware and I am awake. And I know that what I'm doing to my body is not good. I know that what I'm in is not good. And I'm ready to come out. I'm ready to strive for sanctification. I want to be used like the master wants me to use and not using myself up because the Bible says for the wages of sin are death means you're, you're gradually working your way to a fatal ending. You're gradually working your way to a fatal ending. If you don't make the decision to come out now, God is able. God has power. God has strength. God God has the ability to pull you out. The question is, is do you have enough gumption down on the inside, enough courage to say, I'm ready to come out of this? And I may not be talking to you, but you know somebody who's struggling and they need to come out of sin. Well, you can't do it by yourself. If you could do it by yourself, then you wouldn't need God. You would be you would be God. But if you rely on the power of the Holy Ghost, if you rely on what the Bible is saying here, and I'm, I'm going to finish up reading here, but it says, but let us, verse eight, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith. Number one, start with faith, understanding that God can do it. Number two, he says, and love, knowing that God loves you. And if you show love back, God will be to you what you are to him. And then he says, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation, the hope the hope. You got to have hope in this. You got to have hope that God is able and that God can do it and God will do it. If you have hope in God, you will get the reward. You just got to put your trust in the Lord. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I want to tell you today that it is possible to come out. It is. You may have family members. It is possible for your family members to come out. We got to keep praying, keep fighting, but ultimately they have to make the decision. If they make the, the decision, for sanctif sanctification, God will bring them out. How many of you know that sanctification is a process, but we got to start the process by saying yes. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, we want you to hit that subscribe button, like it, let us know that this has impacted you. And I want you to join us tonight right here at seven o'clock PM. If you're in the city, come on to 4000 Atlantic Avenue, Suite 116. We want to see you. God bless you. Love you. I'm over my time. But I want to get this word to you. I hope to see you real soon. God bless.